If you're on the lookout for new products to add to your print-on-demand store, you may want to consider posters. Posters are a great print-on-demand product because the quality is excellent. You cannot tell the difference between a print-on-demand poster and one that you would get from any other store. There's also some pretty attractive profit margins out there for print-on-demand posters. I've got two styles of posters that are from Printify that we're going to take a look at. We'll do a review of the quality, and then we'll take a look at niche ideas and pricing. So stick around and let's talk about adding posters to your print-on-demand shop. First, I just want to mention that Printify is a sponsor of this video. They provided the two samples free of charge so that we could do this review. All right, before we look at the actual posters, I want to just talk for a second about the shipping or the packaging of the posters, because naturally you sell something made out of paper. You want to make sure the customer is going to receive it in good shape. Well, the posters that uh, that I got samples of are both from Printify and they're from the print provider Sensaria. And that print provider used to be called Circle Graphics. I've sold uh, posters from them in the past when they were under the name Circle Graphics. So if you're looking for Circle Graphics and you don't see them on Printify, it's because they changed their name to Sensaria. And so both of these posters arrived in one of these triangular cardboard tubes. And they're very, very sturdy, these, these, uh, these tubes. And then they just pop open like this. And the poster is rolled up in a plastic sleeve inside. So all in all, I'd say packaging very high quality on these, and I'm not worried at all about the customer receiving them in good shape. All right, so let's talk about the two styles of posters uh, that I got. Printify's catalog has actually a pretty large selection of posters now, uh, larger than it was even just a year ago. Sensaria, which used to be Circle Graphics, is a US-based print provider, and they offer a few different uh, paper styles. So I have two. I have the sort of classic, the bestseller, uh, matte poster, and this is called their premium matte. And this is the vertical, this one is vertical, which you'll see in just a second. And then I have the satin poster. The satin poster is listed as slightly higher GSM, which is a measurement of the weight of the paper. So the higher the GSM, the heavier or thicker the paper is. Uh, the satin is listed at 210 GSM, and the, the premium matte is listed at 175 GSM. So in theory, the matte poster should be a thinner paper than the satin. Now let's take a look at the satin poster first. The satin poster has not a glossy finish, but as the name would imply, kind of a satiny smooth finish to it. So it does have some shine, which if I hold it right so that the lights are kind of bouncing off of it, I think you can probably see some reflection there. And you should be able to also see some of that kind of shininess in the close-up shots that I'll be showing. Now, I chose a graphic for this one that is kind of a typical what you probably picture in your head when you think of posters. It's a landscape image. This one is a, um, a vector graphic that's from Vexels. This could be a photograph, but it's actually, you know, a digital graphic. So it's not, not the sharp photographic quality. It's meant to be a little artistic, more like a painting kind of a thing. And I added the explore text on the top. So, you know, just kind of what you might think of when you think of a poster. And we'll get into pricing a little bit later, but this size, which is 20 inches by 30 inches, is actually, I think, kind of a sweet spot size because it's not the largest size it's not the smallest size it's definitely still big like you'd still call this a poster it's not one of the, one of those like small little things and when we look at pricing i think you'll see pretty good opportunity for profit margin here and also the the text that i added i think you'll be able to see in the close-ups came out really really sharp like clearly this is high dpi printing and you can't tell the difference between the quality of this print and any poster that you would buy in a store. So if you're looking to do poster prints of, say, your photography or your artwork, something like that, where you want a really high DPI print, these are a really nice option, especially if you want that kind of satiny finish to it. All right, now this one... All right, now this one is the premium matte finish poster. And like I said, the catalog lists it as slightly lower GSM or slightly lower weight, but it actually feels more sturdy to me. It also really is much more rolled up and springy compared to the satin one. 
Something about that paper, it was much easier to unroll and then it kind of almost stayed flat on its own immediately. This one really wants to spring back into the rolled shape. And I don't know if that's because of the, the print or the paper or both. Um, those are not bad things, just differences to be aware of. So this one definitely has a matte finish. It has a very matte feel to it. It's almost like a little bit of a texture, um, especially compared to the smooth and shiny texture of the satin poster. Now the matte finish is great because if you don't like reflections or shininess, you're just not, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this into the light a little bit. You're just not gonna get those reflections or that, that that glare off of the poster like you will with a satin or a glossy poster. Now you may be wondering why I picked a design with a niche as specific as judo for this sample, but I promise there is a reason for it and we'll see that when we take a look at the niche research. I wanted to show you that you can sell posters for specific niches much in the same way that you would for t-shirts or sweatshirts or mugs. Posters are a great way to sell things like landscape photography and other artwork and scenery, but they're also a great way to sell designs that are for specific niches. But we'll take a look at that in just a second. First, let me just round this out by saying, again, the quality of this poster I think is top notch. No difference to me from any matte poster I've purchased or seen in any store. The print quality, again, very, very sharp. I hope you can see that in the close-ups. You know, all of the lines and edges are pretty much perfect. I, again, very high DPI printing. So if you had a design that you think would look really good on a matte finish, um, this, this is an excellent option for you. Now, I don't think you need to necessarily go with one or the other. You could certainly sell some of both. You could also offer the satin and the matte finish both in the same listing. You can just add another product variant, copy the SKU number over for the sizes that you offer, and have a combination listing where the customer can pick uh, from, from either one. And if you're curious how to do that with Printify and still have your orders synced, I have a video I'll drop a link to in the description and I'll link to it up in the top corner in case you're curious about how to make those combination listings with Printify. But now let's hop into that niche research. I'll take a look at the judo poster niche that I found using Sales Samurai, and then we'll talk about mock-ups and pricing. All right, let's start by talking about search volume for just a moment, then we'll get into the niches. So for search volume, this is Google Trends, last five years, United States search for just the word poster. As you can see, there are some minor ebbs and flows here over the course of the last five years, but for the most part, search volume for posters has remained relatively steady. So there's not really any clear seasonality with posters, which that's a good thing because that means we can expect them to sell at any point throughout the year. When it comes to search volume on Etsy, our Sales Samurai Chrome extension is indicating just poster is coming up with about 26,000 monthly searches. Poster print is coming up with 977, so about a thousand monthly searches. Vintage posters, something you probably don't want to use in your title, in your tags, unless you're saying vintage style for a particular design, because people who search for vintage posters are looking for just that. They're looking for old posters, not print on demand posters. So you can see in terms of the general search phrases that you have for posters, there is a healthy monthly search volume, of course. You're not going to want to use these as, you know, the only thing in your title and tags because they're going to return a lot of search results. But one thing that the Sales Samurai Chrome extension is really good for is looking at one of those really general search trends and popping open the, the Chrome extension window. And what this does is it gives you all of the related searches that contain that same word or phrase. And it compares the search volume to the competition. And it also lets you filter. So what I've done here is I just popped open the search for posters and then I added a competition filter. So now we're only seeing um, the phrases, search phrases that contain the word poster and they have less than 1000 competing listings. Now, even a thousand competing listings is, you know, a decent amount. But what we're going to find here is hopefully some ideas for a niche that maybe is something specific we can go create a design for. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, the same as you would with anything else, you're going to see things in the list that are obviously trademarked or copyrighted. So you can't go making a design for um, Amadeus, the movie, or 
Um, there's a couple of band names I see in here. You can't, you know, go making designs that are uh, copyrighted material using a band's name or image or a movie, things like that. But this is exactly how I came up with the idea for that judo themed poster, because here it is on the list with 332 monthly searches and less than a thousand competing listings. So if we look at that actual search, we've got under a thousand listings and we take a look at what kind of search results we get there are a lot of results that are showing different judo moves, which is probably something great to hang up on the wall if you have you know, a room at home where you're practicing judo. So there's some good ideas here for what you might wanna hang on the wall if you are just a fan of practicing judo or if you're somebody that teaches judo. And there are also some other really interesting judo artworks here. There's also some things that are not posters showing up in the search results. So some of these 970 or so are actually not even necessarily relevant if you were looking for a poster. And so that's how I came up with this design. Now the graphics are a combination of a few different elements from vexels and just customized things that I did in Photoshop. So you can get poster graphics from a graphic service like vexels or from Creative Fabrica maybe, or you can always look for niches that are relevant if you are a photographer or an artist because Poster prints are really high quality prints, as I mentioned, they're really high DPI, so they're gonna come out great quality. And so if you're an artist or a graphic designer or a photographer, there can also be some really good niches where uh, you could showcase some of your work and you wouldn't necessarily have to do quite as much uh, searching for a graphic because you might already have one or have the ability to create one from scratch. All right, now let's talk about mockups for a second because posters are yet another product where the default mockups available through most print on demand platforms maybe aren't the best. This is a good example of one. This is a default mockup from that Sensaria provider on Printify, and this is a plain white background mockup. And I personally just would like to use something that has more context around it. And the only context mockup that's available is a Christmas context mockup for some odd reason. I'm not sure why Christmas is the only one. Uh, but thankfully, posters are relatively easy when it comes to creating your own mockups. Now, you know that I love Placeit. And so this is my Placeit account. I've uploaded uh, my judo poster here onto one of the poster mockups that's available. I believe there are some free templates available for posters if you have a free Placeit account. Of course, if you have a paid Placeit account, there's a huge catalog of options available. So Placeit is a great option for adding uh, some more professional looking mockups, but you can even do it directly in Canva as well. And there's a couple different ways to do it. So this is one that I made myself. All I did was I searched for a picture of a poster. So I just went to photos and I searched for poster. And then you can see there's all of these different mock-up images with blank posters in them. And so I just grabbed, you know, the image of my poster, placed it in there, and there you go. There's a more professional looking mock-up. Now you can also find templates of mock-ups in Canva. If you go to templates and then you search uh, poster or I just searched for mock-up and then I started looking for poster ones. And you'll find some that actually have a frame built right in so that you can add your image. So for example, this one, this, uh, where the image actually is, this is a frame, which you can then see that it's mobile. Um, and so you can actually just take your uploaded image and swap it in. Now you're gonna have to do some cropping potentially if the aspect ratio of your image is not the exact same as the mockup. As long as it's a fair representation, I don't think it has to be exactly perfect. Um, for this one, I might not use the one that I just showed you because as you can see, it kind of cuts off the border on the top or the bottom because the aspect ratio isn't quite right. So if I can't play around with it to get it to fit, I might just pick a different one. But for example, like this first one that I showed you, this is a perfectly usable mock-up photo that has the context around it and it's a little bit better than just the plain white background. So there are a lot of options for you in terms of creating better mock-ups for your posters, whether it's Canva or Placeit or some of the other mock-up sites that are out there. Now let's talk about the product variants and the sizes that you have available for these posters and then we'll get to the pricing. So I'm looking at the premium matte posters and we have multiple sizes available for those all the way from nine by 11 inches all the way up to 24 by 36 inches. So the regular price base cost for the smallest size is $5.16 and the largest size is $16.61. Now on the smallest size, the price goes down to $3.98. So very, very low price. 
um, with the premium plan. But let's talk about pricing in just a moment. When it comes to offering the different sizes, uh, there's a couple things to be aware of. Number one, you don't have to offer every size. It's totally up to you. I personally, when I offer posters, like to go with maybe three different sizes. One that's on the smaller side so I can show that really low price in my listing. And then at least one that's one of the largest two sizes, maybe 20 by 30, uh, because the cost is still going to be pretty darn competitive for it. And you saw from one of the ones that I showed you that was 20 by 30. It still is a pretty darn big poster, and so most people are going to be happy with that as the largest size. Now, when it comes to the print file sizes on these, you're definitely going to need to use a graphic design software or a photo editing software. And so if you don't have Photoshop, you can use Photopia or one of the other free softwares out there. You're not going to be able to use Canva to make your print files for posters because the file dimensions need to be pretty large. So I have the 24 by 36 inch size selected here. So that's the largest size for the map poster. And the print area size is 7,200 by 10,800. So if I made a graphic that was exactly the largest size, then I know it would work well for the smaller sizes as well. I just have to, you know, size it down a little bit. But 10,800 pixels is larger than the maximum dimensions of a file that you can have in Canva. In case you're curious, the largest size that's on here that Canva allowed me to actually make as far as the dimensions was the 12 by 18 size, which is 3600 by 5400. So if that's the biggest one you want to make, you could use Canva for it. But if you want any of the sizes uh, larger than that, 16 by 20, 18 by 24, 20 by 30, or 24 by 36, you're going to have to use different software that allows you to make files that big. One thing to watch out for is just that these different measurements are not all the same aspect ratio. So 6,000 by 9,000 might be too narrow for one of these other sizes, meaning you won't maximize the width while without overstretching the height, if that makes sense. Let me just show you what I mean when it comes to aspect ratio. So this is the 20 by 30 inch size, and I made my print file for the judo poster the exact size that was required, 6,000 by 9,000. By the way, you can use JPEGs for these because you don't need a transparent background for posters. Now, if I wanted to offer a different size, what I need to pay attention to when it comes to the aspect ratio is just basically this. So if I wanted to do 18 by 24, notice what happens here. Because the aspect ratio of the measurements is different, in order to max out the width of this particular size, I need to stretch it out so that the height is hanging off the top and the bottom by quite a bit. And that doesn't look very good. So I have two choices. I can either edit my print file, change the aspect ratio of it so that it does fit 18 by 24, or I can choose not to offer 18 by 24 and instead try to find another size that the aspect ratio is the same. It looks like 12 by 18 is the exact same aspect ratio as 20 by 30, so that one will work. Personally, based on this, I'm inclined to only offer it in 20 by 30 and 12 by 18 because it's an easier choice for the customer between the two. There's a good difference in the size between the two and 12 by 18 will allow me to show a pretty low price in my listing. All right, based on that, now let's talk pricing. So we're looking at the map poster first and let's pretend that we're going with that 12 by 18 and 20 by 30 size. You can always look up the rest of the pricing uh, for the other sizes based on what you want to offer, but let's just stick with the example that we kind of started there. So 12 by 18, the base price for the regular Printify account is $9.22 and we're going to have a shipping charge to the United States for 12 by 18 of $6.29. So that gives us a total cost of $15.51. So if we come over to our Allura calculator here, we put in our cost of $15.51. Now let's see what kind of a retail price we would need to charge here to get an acceptable profit margin. So I guessed $24.99 and that's coming out with a $6.66 profit margin for uh, 27%. So I think that the 12 by 18, um, that's probably where you want to be with that. I would say posters generally you want to shoot for 30% or higher profit margin. Um, the premium account's definitely going to help you out here because the premium account price is $7.10, again, plus the same shipping cost of $6.29. So that drops your cost down to $13.39. And if you kept the same $24.99 retail price, that's a profit margin of 35%, $8.78. Not bad for a poster. 
Now, if you want to charge shipping on this, which you certainly can, you could drop your retail price by however much you're gonna charge for shipping and come out with the same profit margin. I might charge something like $3 to maybe $4 for shipping, or you could choose to go with $5 for shipping and drop your retail price to $19.99. Now for the larger size, the 20 by 30 size uh, for the premium account is $9.94. So that's coming out to $16.23. So, so for that one, you're looking at a total retail price of about $26.99. So again, if you back out some of that for shipping, if you wanted to go with $5, you're looking at $21.99 for uh, the largest size. So not a huge difference in price for the, the 12 by 18 and the larger size. In fact, I think you could add a little bit more profit margin here. Instead of going with 29%, you could probably bump this to $28.99 as far as the total price and get close to $10 a profit on the larger size just to give yourself a little bit more price difference between the two sizes. So you're looking around $31.99 to $32.99 in terms of getting a similar profit margin if you have the regular free Printify account. And now the pricing for the satin posters at the 210 GSM weight is actually very close to what the pricing of the premium map posters is. It's actually just a little bit less. So the regular price for the 12 by 18 size is $739 and the 30 by 20 size is $1107. So just a hair less than the regular pricing for the map posters. And the same is true with once you have the premium account, it's just a little bit less than your map poster size. You could in fact charge the same retail price for both options and include them in the same listing as I mentioned earlier. And you just have a slightly higher profit margin on the satin ones. I wanna mention one thing about the catalog and that is that when you look at more details here, there are horizontal and vertical options for the satin posters listed within the same product listing in the Printify catalog. So you can get the same sizes in either horizontal or vertical orientation, depending on whether your design is portrait or landscape. But for the premium map posters, they actually are separate listings in the Printify catalog. So if your design is landscape, you need to scroll down and find the premium matte horizontal posters. All right, well, that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful and I hope that it has opened your eyes to the possibility of offering print on demand posters in your online shop. Let me know in the comments if it was helpful. Let me know if you already sell posters and how it's going for you. Let me know if you're interested in selling posters. And thank you so much for all the support, especially if you are a returning subscriber. I really appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get notified of future videos and hit that like button if the video was helpful for you so YouTube can get it out there to more people. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.